And uh, I thought, Lord, I don't want to preach on it just because it's that time of year. And it kept coming on my mind and come on my mind until I'm convinced uh, that I believe it's the message for the hour. So you listen here in Luke chapter number 2 and verse number 7. Luke chapter number 2 and verse number 7. Now, kids, you've done pretty good this week. I got up here last Sunday and I said, we need to pray for it to snow. And I said, kids, we need to get on it. Because we don't want it to snow on Sunday. What day we want it snow on? Monday. And then the next day, it did. I thought about you. I thought, hallelujah, boy, they're getting through. But we forgot to ask the Lord how much we want it to snow. You know, all that did was just make us hungry. <clears throat> Ain't that right? That just made us want... So tell him, what, what are we going to put our order in for here? Three feet, not quite. Uh, uh, six inches would be a, a nice one to start out with. Something like that, y'all right? So ask, the, pray, pray. You have not because you ask not. Luke chapter 2. All the kids are praying for it to snow. Mom and daddy's praying that it won't. We'll see who's right. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. I want to preach to you this morning on the subject, no room for Jesus. I was uh, out there, I was flyer I brought back from Texas this week and they had me and Brother Reggie up on billboards all over town. The brothers come into town. Uh, but they didn't have a picture, they just had our names up and uh, we had a great time out there and they've done a great job. But uh, I began to think about this this week and um, I want to mention a few things about it this morning. When they went to Bethlehem for the, the baby to be born, it was a time of great taxing and uh, they were going up, going into Bethlehem and they went to a, a motel inn trying to get a room. Now you've all seen the stories about the uh, mean old innkeeper that wouldn't, didn't have room for the baby Jesus and all that. And Well, I don't really know. Turn me up, please. Uh, I don't really know if that's the way it was or not. He might have been a good man. He might have been an uh, upstanding citizen. He might even have been uh, a follower of the Bible or a, a believer in God. Uh, we don't know that. For some reason or another, he had no room for them in the end. If he'd have knew who that was, he'd have made room. But he had all of his rooms filled up. Every room was come. Joseph comes in that night, said, uh, I need a room. He said, sorry, we're all filled up. Joseph said, but it's just me and my wife, and my wife's getting ready to have a baby. He said, well, too bad. All our rooms are filled. And maybe somebody said, you can go out there in that barn there, a stable, if you want to. At least you'll be out of the cold if it rains or whatever, uh, and you'll be safe. So Mary and Joseph goes into the uh, stable, and there they, the baby is born. Now, um, this has been used through time and memoriam to paint a picture of people having no room for the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. And we, we all sit around today and think, how horrible. How could them people have done that? Not made room for that mother who was about ready to deliver a child and the birth of the Son of God. Boy, if it had been me, I would have cleared out my best room. I would have gave up my room. I would have let him sleep in my bed. You know, you're saying that here in 1997. But yet, some, you people sitting right here this morning, many of you have no room for Jesus Christ in your life right now. now I'm not talking about just lost people. I will in a minute. But I'm going to talk about Christian people. A lot of times, Christian people have no room for Jesus. We shudder when we think about that uh, man who run that inn uh, turning down the Lord Jesus and not giving him a place to stay. And yet we do the same things many, many times. I, I was preaching. I, I'll tell you this. I don't know where this tape might wind up. But it's kind of funny. I was preaching down there the other night. And they was having the services in, different, in a different church. Not where I usually go. Several churches 
we're, we're going. I didn't even know who the pastor of this church was, to tell you the truth, for a few days. And there were seven churches went together. And boy, I got up the other night, you know, like I do sometimes, and I began to rant and rave and scream and holler about going to church and going to church and going to church. And I said, buddy, you ought to go to church every time the door's open. And, and, I, and I do believe that. I believe you should. I believe I should. I believe you ought to always go to church and be faithful. Being, going to church regular now is making room for Jesus in your life. Don't criticize this innkeeper for not making room for him. If you won't even make room for him, get up and come to church on Sunday morning. Ain't that right? You say, well, there's, there's a lot of things about church I don't like. You, you mean use agreement on that. There's a lot I don't like. But it's still God's house. And it's God's people meant to worship God and you're supposed to be there. If you don't like this church, go find you one you do like. If you can't find one you do like, start you one. You'll be the only perfect person in it. You and your wife, and y'all will split before it's over with. But I will tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, we need to make room for the Lord and not shut Him out. Shut Him out of our life. Well, I got to preaching about that. And I said, y'all know that Christmas Eve's on Wednesday and every one of you better be in church. Whew. That was the sorriest amen I've heard in two or three weeks. That, a, that amen had to get crutches to get up here where I can hear it. You say, well, my family has... Oh, really? Uh, really? I, I bet that's what that fellow said. Can me and my wife get a room tonight? No, me and my family are eating turkey. No room for Jesus. Isn't that about what it boils down to? You don't have room for the Lord in your busy life. And I said, boy, you better go to church. I said you better go to church on Christmas Eve. I imagine somebody saying, why, well, church, what are you talking about? It's the Lord's birthday. We're not going to church. Boy, I ran and raved on that and screamed and hollered and stomped and spit and, and done everything but cussed. And boy, I beat the pulpit. And I said, you ought to go to church on Wednesday night on Christmas Eve. Just honor the Lord. Joy to the world. Boy, I didn't know it. They told me afterward that that pastor had already canceled the services for that. I said, oh, don't tell me that. And I said, why didn't you tell me that before I preached that? He got up there and said, it's on the bulletin, man. Wednesday, December 24th, canceled. No services. Nobody goes to church. How do you think that would make Jesus feel? How do you think that would make Jesus? You say, well, preacher, I just think it's awful that they had shut the doors of the church, the great house of God. I think it would be horrible for them to close the doors on Christmas. Well, you're going to be here then, right? Okay, okay. I just want to make sure then you're going to be here. If you're not going to come, I'm not coming. It's all right for you to stay on. It's all right for me. Amen. You got room for him today? You got room for it? The truth is, we want the Lord to make room for us, but we don't want to make room for Him. Have you ever noticed uh, He's not on our shopping list, but we sure want to be on His, don't we? On your shopping list. Oh, there, there's Grandma and there's Grandpa and there's... Boy, I'm glad... I'm glad the so-and-so got divorced. Won't have to buy her nothing no more. Uh, there's so-and-so. And there, there's, that's the way you do. Don't look at me like that. You know? And you say, oh, there's my mother-in-law. Ugh, I ain't going to spend much on her this year. Can't afford it. And there's so-and-so. And, there, and you go down through there. And you go out and you try. Well, I, foot, I've looked all day long. Get them one of them. Well, you can't get them both the same thing. Yeah, they'll never know it. Put it in the buggy. And you go in there. Let's get this over with. And forget the Lord Jesus Christ. Forget about Him who we're supposed to be honoring. Forget about Him that we're supposed to be praising. Forget about Him. Boy, when it comes time for Him to give out stuff, we don't want to be left off His list. Lord, remember me. Lord, I need this. And Lord, you know I need this. And Lord, please help me. And Lord, please give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Lord, please. Lord, please let this happen. Lord, please let that happen. We want to be on His list of gifts, but we don't want to be uh, Him to put uh, on, on our list. We want to be invited to His get-togethers, but He's not invited to ours. Amen? Hey, you ain't got no business going to a Christmas party where you can't take Him. Amen? He's your best friend. He's your Savior. You got room for Him today? Do you have room for the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you have room for Him? People make room for what they want to make room for. I, I'm amazed. I'm amazed that how, how you folks, you can fit in everything else. Everything else, you'll work it out. You'll work it out. You're rushed. 
but you'll work it out. This get together, that get together, this get together, that get together. You can be there and ready to eat. But boy, when it comes time to doing something for the Lord, sometimes you're just too busy. Your life is too crowded. You don't have room for the Lord Jesus Christ. You take that Bible right there. You know what? That's His Word. That's the written Word. He's the living Word. Many of you this morning have no time for Jesus. You say, well, I've got room for Jesus in my life. Don't even read the Bible. Don't even read the Bible. Uh, You know, in a few weeks, we're going to have our watch night service on December 31st. And we'll line everybody up. Let's read the whole Bible all the way through. And for many years, the Lord's let me read the Bible all the way through. And I praise Him for it. And I've read it through many times. The New, New Testament, bunches and bunches and bunches and bunches of times. And you know what? Every time I read that thing through, it begins to speak to me. I was reading the Bible the other day. And I was reading from verses back there in, in Daniel. And it got a hold of my heart like it never had before. Just fresh and new. That's His Word. If you don't have room for His Word in your life, you don't have room for Him. I'm talking to Christian people that have no room for Jesus. No room for Him. You've got room for as the stomach turns every day at whatever time it comes on. Here they are. But you know I did. I didn't either. But I did. Really? Yes. It's been you I've loved all along. (laughs) Music starts playing. He begins to kiss. When he does that, the door opens and somebody comes in. It happens every time, don't it? (gasps) And then you go to a commercial. You got to watch tomorrow to see what she did when she walked in on him kissing. That's all they are. Now, I, I don't believe I've ever watched a whole soap opera through in my life. I don't think I have. Lord, have mercy on me if I did. I mean, I might, when I was a kid, homesick from school, and there wasn't nothing but get but one channel. I might have them. But I tell you what, you're hard up to do. You're hard up for something to do if that's all you got to do here. And you won't be in the line that comes up here and said, I've read my Bible all the way through. I guarantee it. Amen? You've got time for everything else. You say, well, Brother Danny, you're not fussing. I'm not fussing at you if you're not guilty, okay? And if you're guilty, don't get mad at me. It's not my fault. It's your fault. It's your fault you don't read your Bible. Don't you go out here and say, well, I just don't like his attitude. You're getting mad because I'm getting on you for what you're not doing, and it's not my fault. That's like you smashing the mirror because it shows you the wrinkles in your face, lady. It ain't, don't get mad at me, man. It ain't my fault. You don't read your Bible. Stick your nose in this thing and read it. You know what somebody said? I don't read the Bible because I can't understand it. That is brilliant. Uh, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Wait till you understand it before you ever read it? It's going to be a while before you understand it never reading it. You know what? There's a whole bunch of the Bible I don't understand. There's a lot of the Bible. Give me up just a tad more, Roy. Uh, there's a lot of the Bible that I don't understand. There's some verses in there. There's probably a hundred verses in the Old Testament that I can't make heads or tails out of. I don't even know what it's talking about. I don't even know. I just read it and just shake my head. But I'll tell you one thing. It's still good anyway. And I believe it anyway. And it works and it's real. And I believe every part of it that I can't understand. Say, I just don't have time to read my Bible, preacher. You had time to fix that hair this morning. Some of you. Some of you missed it somewhere. But hey, you had time to get them clothes on. You have time to, uh, I, I tell you what, you got time to watch that football game. You've got time to sit up, talk on the phone. You've got time. Where's your time for Jesus Christ? Just some of you people spend half as much time with the Lord and your Bible as you do watching television. You would be a soul winner and win a soul to Jesus. But you don't because you don't have room for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I appreciate these boys. You know, everywhere I go nowadays, I like that song they sing, that first one, where it talks about, you know, we got a hope and we got something to look forward to. And the second song about rejoice and all of that. I, everywhere I go, people say, Brother Danny, this is the worst time I've ever been through. Times are hard. I know that. It's a hard day that we're living in. Brother, these battles we're fighting that we've never fought before. There's pressure on our young people like it's never been before. I'm telling you, we had that great revival in 94, and then in 95, they skidded off of that. 
and in 96, they're this summer, but the devil's hit. I mean, it's hit. He said, some you teenagers, like never before. And I appreciate you hanging in there. And hang. But let me tell you something. At the same time the devil fights, God's still blessing. Very say, I've never seen it fail yet. Hey, you say, well, we had a problem at the school. Yeah, I know. But we also had a man called to preach at the school. Every time the devil fights, God still blesses. Somebody told me the other day, somebody told me not long ago, they said, well, Brother Danny, I don't know what's wrong with our camp meeting this year. I just didn't get nothing out of it. And then I ran into somebody else. They said, man, I loved our camp meeting. It was the best one we've ever had. Now the camp meeting, both of them went to the same camp meeting. It's just a condition of your heart. It's a condition of your heart, brother. Have you got room for Jesus or are you pushing him out with everything else under the world? Amen. Some folks wouldn't be happy if Jesus was up here preaching. And, and we had the angels up here singing. You know why? They're full of the things of this world. You tell you what them boys did. Oh, oh uh, I don't know if I got this story straight or not. I believe I got it right. I heard two or three different people. These boys out there. What was it the other night when y'all went out there? Out, out preaching out there. When, the, huh? Whatever night it was. You don't remember. <laughs> Probably ain't true then. It's Thursday night. Okay. They, they didn't know what I was talking about there for a minute. Well, David here, David here had, had one of the baddest Mustangs in town. Y'all know his Mustang. It's this color right here. Hey, it's got them... I mean, it thing is uh, got shiny wheels on it. Uh, it's a bad car, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it's a bad car. I like. I never did get to drive it, but that is one bad Mustang. And he is how old are you, David? Sixteen years old, and has a bad Mustang with the bad wheels. And buddy, I'll tell you what. You know what he told me the other day? He said, "Brother Danny, I'm going to trade this Mustang." He said, "I'm going to get rid of it." And I said, "What for?" He said, "I want me a pickup truck." And I thought, what? He said, I want me a pickup truck that us boys can go and, ple- and preach and do something for God in. You know what? Most churches ain't never had a 16-year-old even give a testimony in on the street corner. And I, how many 16-year-olds give up a Mustang, a bad Mustang, for a truck to preach out of the back of? You see what I'm saying? I know the devil's fighting us, but I know God's blessing us at the same time. Amen. Sometimes you got to fight to keep a hold of this thing. Sometimes you got to wrestle to stay right with God. All you teenagers, you floated for about two years. It was easy to stay right. Now you got to grab a hold of it. Now you got to say, hey, I'm not going to let the devil ruin my life. I'm going to make Jesus Christ first in my life. So he got his truck, Dodge Ram. It's a bad truck, too. Yeah, it is. Black, got that extra uh, seat in that thing, man. Seat about five. And he got that truck. They went out there to preach the other night. And uh, got preaching. He told Mr. Waddle, he said, I want a sign. He said, we need a sign like y'all use out there. And the school, God's plan of salvation. He said, how much one of them things cost? He told him something, maybe like $80 or something like that. He said, man, I ain't got $80. They went, they went ahead and went out to Walmart and preached. And a businessman come through from Knoxville, Tennessee and walked up and handed them boys a $100 bill out there the other day. Yes, sir. Amen. Thank God, Thank God. I'm going out there and preach this evening. Let me borrow your truck. <laughs> Amen. Hey, nobody ever gave me $100 preaching on the street. Never. I preached on the street for years and nobody ever gave me $100. Woman wrote me a note one time. After I was preaching at the shopping center out there and this woman wrote me a note and said, Dear Sir, are you mentally unbalanced? Like, that's what it said. Something like that. She said, Do you not have a church that'll let you preach? <laughs> she thought that poor, crazy person. There's no church that'll let him preach. And, it, and, and said, uh, reli- uh, Religion should be kept in the church. You know, she's crazy. And uh, I, I, I just, I, I ain't never got $100 out there preaching. Some guy, and he was a businessman. How do I think about that? A businessman and his wife just passing through, going skiing. Stops at Walmart. God touched his heart. Give them boys 100 bucks to get them a sign and put on that truck and go out preaching the Word of God. Isn't that a blessing, people? That's what happens when you make room for Jesus. If you make room for Jesus, He'll make room for you. Amen? You, you put him first place in your life, he'll take care of you. That's right. Amen. I was noticing them kids out there in Texas this week. Every kid, you could tell a difference of night and day in the ones that have been to camp and the ones that haven't. 
One of the men had been in camp just sat there like this. Man, the ones that been in the camp, as soon as it was over, they go like this. They swarm me. I sit like this on the seat with it, like this with the guitar, soaking wet with sweat after I preach. And there's about 40 of them sitting around like this, saying, sing this, sing that, sing this, sing that, sing this, sing that, sing come and see. Clean, sing man in the middle. Uh, uh, sing, uh, 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 I tried to teach them I don't throw it in my hand, but I was so hoarse I couldn't do it. And boy, they wanted to sing, sing, sing. And I thought, there's a girl there, about 16 years old, who, had, 17 maybe, has a boyfriend and he's been gone off to college or something like that. And her boyfriend was just coming in for the service. And she didn't even go get him at the airport. She stay and sing in that choir. And she plays in their band and sent somebody else after him at the airport. Your girls listening to me? All you girls listening to me? I said, you know what she done? That 17-year-old girl made room for Jesus. She, she sat in the choir and sang. Her boyfriend's supposed to get to the airport at 6.59. One minute before church start. They sent somebody else after him so she could be in the choir and play her instrument. Y'all listen to me? She didn't do it like a lot of you girls. Oh, my boyfriend's coming in. I'm going to go get him at the airport. I'm going to go get him. I know I'll miss service tonight, but it's important that I be with him. Bull! Amen. That's what that is. Amen. Amen? She made room for Jesus. Amen. And let me tell you what else. They sat right up here next about the second or third row. Not on the back seat. And after the service, instead of saying, I'm just so glad to see you, let's go back here and talk. They were in that crowd crowded around me wanting to sing gospel songs. Amen. You don't think the Lord takes notice of stuff like that? You don't think the Lord takes notice of you? He knows who's making room for Him. He knows who's making room for Him. Now let me say something to you right quickly this morning who are not saved. There's three stages of your life and all three of these stages, if you're not careful, you won't have room for Jesus. Young, middle age, old age. When you're young, it's the flesh. The Bible said the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It's the flesh. You want to live your own life. Have freedom. You think, you think the Bible is going to cramp your style. You're impressed with the world. You know how come a lot of you young people won't live for Jesus? It's because you want to do what this flesh wants to do. You say, I don't want to sit in church. Man, I want to go skiing. I want to go bowling. I want to go dating. I want to go partying. I want to do this. I want to do that. When you're young, that's your excuse. You say, I'm young now. I'm going to do what I want to do. When I get older, I'll live for God and get in church and do right. Let me tell you what your problem is. You think you've got plenty of time. So you ain't got no room. Then you, a few years go by and you move into that second stage called middle age. Middle age, they, they argue over when it starts. I don't know what really the definition of it is. Some people say it's 30 or 35 and then on up 40, 45, whatever. I know one fellow said it's when everything falls off, falls out or falls down. <laughs> Gravity just pulls you down toward the ground. You sag. And uh, but when you're middle age, it's the lust of the eyes. Like Felix in Acts chapter 24. Your health is good, and then all you want to do is work, 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 and make a living. You know what you want to do when you're young? Have fun. When you're young, you ain't got room for Jesus because I want to have fun, man. I want to do this. Wow, wow. Well. Then you hit 26, 27, you think, man, I ain't going to have no fun without money. And I'm sick and tired of working this in this factory or whatever. Then you try to go get you a little schooling or and say, I'm into this money thing now. When you're 30 and 35, it's just money, money. You want to make it, make it. Pay off them bills, pay off that house. Why? So you can enjoy life. Then you ain't got time for Jesus. How many 30 and 35 and 40 and 45-year-old men in this town, if you talk to them and say, won't you come to church? They'll say, listen, I just don't have room for it. I don't have time. Sunday's my only day to rest. That's when I mow the grass, take, uh, take the trash off, fool around like that, uh, lay on couch and watch TV. I don't have room for Jesus. When you don't have room for Jesus when you're young, it's because of the, uh, the flesh. When you don't have room for Jesus when you're middle age, because them eyes, you want to bigger, build bigger barns and, and put up stocks and bonds and pay off your house. And if you're not careful, the devil's going to trick you out of your life. 
then you move into that last period of life called older age or the and then it's the pride of life. You start thinking, I've done it this far by myself. I'll make it the rest of the way. I went and seen this guy in Asheville Hospital that was dying. His daughter said, oh, will you please go witness my daddy? He's not saved. He'd had six preachers talk to him laying there dying. Six preachers. I think I was a sixth one guy. I sat down there and I said, Mr. So-and-so, are you saved? Nope. I mean, he only had days to live. That's what they said. You're going to be, he's going to be dead in a few days. And I said, well, I, I, you know there's a heaven. You know there's a hell. You want to get saved? He said, no. Listen to what he said, baby. He said, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> I said, what? What do you mean you ain't ready? Most time people say I'm not ready, they think of all this great stuff they want to do. What's he going to do? He can't get drunk if he wanted to. He can't chase women, party. He can't, he can't shoot dope up. Man, he's laying there dying. And he still says, I'm not ready. What makes an old codger like that do that? The pride of life. The older you get rejecting God, the more dangerous your, your uh, chances are of getting saved. And I read somewhere not long ago, it's hard to believe this, but I read a statistic that said 95% of the people that ever get saved get saved before they're 20 years old. 95%. I don't know that to be a fact, but it's close. Watch this. I'll show you right here. How many in here, me included, got saved before you were 20? Would you raise your hand? Look at that. That's, that's, that's at least 90%. What happens to a person after you get... You think, oh, I'll wait. When I get older, I'll get saved. You know what your problem is? You underestimate the devil. The devil's tricking you, buddy. The devil will make you think, oh, you don't need that now. You're young. You're making a living. And as you get older and older and older, your heart gets hard. And then it's easier and easier to say no to God. And then you start saying, no, I don't want to listen. No, I'm not interested. It's easier and easier and easier. First thing you know, you're dying and you still won't get right. You say, well, anybody get saved on their deathbed? That old fellow never did that I know of. Never did. A man who cares only for his Self when he's young will be stingy in middle age and an old miser in old age. He'll never make it most of the time. You know what you remind me of? You're like a guy going down the road across the desert and your gas hands on empty. And you're telling me you ain't got time to stop and get gas. That's what you're like. That's what you're like. You want me to tell you what you're like? You're like a guy driving down the road, running out of gas, and saying, hey, you better stop and get some gas. No, I don't have time for that right now. That's what you're like. You know what you're like? I'll tell you what you're like. You're like a guy laying in the hospital. I think of all this stuff. You know how I think about stuff like this and like that. You're like a guy laying in the hospital, and you're laying there dying, and the doctor's got the medicine that'll make you better, and you say, I don't have time to take it. I mean, where are you going? Where are you going? You're sitting here this morning dying. You're sitting here this morning on your road to a grave. And then tell me you don't have room for Jesus Christ that came into this world. You don't have time for it. You say, well, preacher, I, I'm doing a lot of things. If I got right with God, I'd have to, to quit and all that. Well, you're going to have to quit anyway. One of them old crazy country singers. One of them old country songs said, there ain't no whiskey in heaven. I don't want to go. I thought, you nut. There ain't none in hell neither. I said, I said, what a nut. What kind of stupid person would say something like that? Well, if you can't drink whiskey in heaven, I don't want to go. What are you going to do? Drink it in hell? It's your only other choice. There ain't none down there, that's for sure. You listening? You got room for him this morning? I'm going to close. Lord, give me a little poem many years ago, and I wrote this little poem that illustrates a message this morning, and I'm going to read it to you, and I'm through. No room for Jesus when I'm young and free. No time for church or the Bible for me. No room for Jesus when I'm a grown man. I'm busy making a living and doing the best I can. No room for Jesus when I'm old and gray, I've lived good enough. I can make it my way. Now as the time comes to die for me, 
Only now it is I'm beginning to see. When at heaven's gates I stand and plea, what a fool I've been. There'll be no room for me. You got no room for him this morning? You're going to be beating on the door one of these days, won't you? He ain't going to have room for you. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Have you any room for Jesus? is playing. Y'all listen now. God speak in your heart. Have you got room for Him? Huh? That's about it. I'm done Christian people. I know you're saved and I know He's in your heart. I understand that doctrinally. But practically speaking this morning, have you just got yourself so busy you don't have room for Jesus. Teenagers? Is he first? How about it? Sunday school teachers? New manor school teachers? Preachers? Mamas? Daddies? Parents? Have, you know what you can do? You can get so busy in the Lord's work, you don't have time for the Lord. May God help us this morning. Father, do what ought to be done in our lives. Lord, you know those that are here this morning, us that need to make a move, get things right with you. Help us to surrender all today. We'll praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.